For years I've taught card making and mixed media whether it be here on YouTube or in person classes and I very often use this technique of ink smooching because it adds fantastic colour, pattern and texture to a background of whatever paper craft project you are working on. But the statement that I hear from crafters all the time is I don't want to make a mess, I don't want to mess it up, I don't want to ruin my project. So I'm going to give you my top tips and techniques for ink smooching, ink splatting, pressing your ink into paper, whatever you like to call it, and doing it within a controlled area and also making beautiful results every single time. Stay tuned to the end because I've got a really fun effect that you can do once you've got your ink smooching down as well. As always, obviously, I'd love a subscribe and a thumbs up on this video if you enjoy it. Now, let's get straight into the tools and materials that you're going to need for the best results. There's so many different mediums out there that you can smooch. I've just got a few here. These are common ones that lots of you will have in your craft room already if you've been a paper crafter for more than about 10 minutes. So we've got Distress Oxides, absolutely my favourite favourite. I'll talk you through those as I use them in the demonstrations today. I've also got Distress Inks as well. These work equally as well. And then we've just got kind of like concentrated inks. These are all water-based. That's the main criteria is that these items need to be water-based. You can use other brands of inks as well. Now you're also going to need some water. I like to use a spray bottle. It's much, much easier to apply to a larger area. If you've got a paintbrush and some water, you can use that. I just never find it works quite as well. And then the paper that we're going on to, you can't just go on to any type of paper. I've got here some smooth card stock. This was even called watercolor card stock, but it's really not. It's bright white, it's super smooth. And you can see here, or oh, certainly I can see, the blotchiness where the paper's absorbed it at a different rate throughout the fibers of the paper. It doesn't look good close up. So what you really want to go on to, if you can, is a watercolor paper. I rave about this one in all of my videos whenever I'm using watercolor cardstock or paper it's a really good heavyweight cardstock it's 300 gsm or 140 pound it comes in this pad and I can just tear off my sheets at a5 size perfect for me to use speaking of paper I would always suggest work on a larger piece than you're actually going to need because this way you can trim down the part that you like best you are going to get different results every single time you do any sort of ink smooching you're never going to get the same effect twice so just because it's a little bit unpredictable which i love about it you can then trim away to the part that you really love and if you've got any areas you don't love cut them away and before you start i definitely suggest you have some kitchen towel or an absorbent towel or wipe to hand and you're going to want some plastic now this can come in lots of different forms i've got a piece here that is essentially a piece of acetate you can use acetate you can use shrink plastic you can use packaging i often take the packaging from my stamps when they come out of the clear bag i cut those up and use them as well or you can even use a block so this is a stamping platform it's one that folds down as long as the two areas touch without a stamp being in there you can use this as well so let's do some basic ink smooching so I'm going to use my distress oxide the reason I use this is because they have a pigment in them and that pigment is really lovely and vivid so I'm going to just press this onto my chosen plastic the smaller the plastic the more accurate your area of smooching is going to be. If you've got a large piece of plastic, you're really going to struggle with keeping that ink in one area. And I will show you an example of this in just a moment. I've got a piece here that's about six by six inches wide, and this is perfect for almost all my card bases unless I really want to keep it to a really small area. So I've just pressed and twisted my ink pad onto my plastic a few times. That's probably about 10 times now. You don't need as much as that usually, but I do talk and I get carried away. And then I'm going to spritz with water. So when you're spritzing, you need to make sure that the ink is able to move around and you can't see any dry areas. However, there is a little bit of a knack to this or a technique to this. You don't want to have it so that when you pick it up, it just runs off and you have a big mess. So I would always say spray lightly. So there's, I've just done four light sprays over. I can see everything's moving about. When I pick it up, it's not running. 
let's just show you that if you added too much water though so you can see it's kind of all blended in that's fine but as soon as I pick that up that is going to cause me problems so I've got just enough water to have blended all that ink I've got a little bit of movement on there but it's not running straight off the surface I will have time to flip this over and onto my paper and that's what I'm going to do first so first of all make sure that your paper is clear from any dust any little bits of fur or any dog hairs if you've got dogs like me and work out whereabouts on the paper you're going to go hover that over and we're going to be quite quick here so we I'll go straight for the middle we're going to go upside down that shouldn't be dripping off now as you can see it shouldn't be dripping off and as we press this down you can see everything spreads out this is where you want to quite quickly determine the size so if it's not quite as large as you want just press the ink out a little bit further you can't always determine the shape exactly but you can usually press it out a bit further than the splodge that you made on your mat. And what you can do here now is hold this down. And because we're going onto watercolour paper, that's very quickly going to absorb that water. And you can keep pressing. I've got a little bit of an air bubble under here, but I can keep pressing that and spreading that water around until the paper essentially kind of soaks most of it up. And we've got a really nice smooth image. Now, wherever you lift up your acetate or your plastic, whatever you've pressed this down with, the last part that is touching is going to leave kind of like a pool of ink or liquid there. So if I lift this up uh, in the middle, as you can see, there we go. So I've got this pool and that will be darker. If you don't like this, you can immediately tap. So just tap that over, spreading that around just dabbing into the ink until you've kind of spread it enough and you're happy with the result. And you can keep doing this as many times as you like until that has all dried. There we go. So I've got a tiny little bit left there. I'm going to just wipe that away and I'm going to give this time. Now, if you've got a part, say for example here, that's really dark, really saturated, really wet and effectively going to run off the page soon if I'm not careful I can use a piece of kitchen towel I can just dip the end of the kitchen towel into that and lift up that excess that's not going to run anywhere anymore let's just do that once more just with this piece here just lift off the excess there we go that will make sure this dries a lot quicker now you can heat dry that if you want to or of course you can just let it air dry now that's quite a nice easy smooch for your first one perfect and I could cut that down if I wanted that to just be in the top corner or on the edge of my card I can do that once that's dry now the beauty of ink smooching is that you can once dry layer up more texture so I'm going to do that again let's do it with the same color so you can really just see the texture rather than the colors I'm going to go with a little less this time I've got my base color down and I'm going to go with a little less water as well make sure that that's all mixed I haven't got any areas on there that are particularly dry and I'm going to do the same but this time I'm not going to press the whole thing in I'm just going to dab just as we were when we were spreading that ink around just dab over areas that you've already gone on to and I love that using clear plastic here we're actually getting a really good view through to see why we're where we're pressing it and the effect that we're going to get again if there's any areas you don't like you can lift them up but let that dry whether it's air dry or using your heat tool and we've now got a lot more texture because this is a really good watercolor cardstock i'm able to work on the reverse of this if i don't absolutely love the image on this side what i'm going to do on this side is show you about color mixing so rather than just using the one color we're going to use two colors and i'm going to be able to show you how to be careful about which two or three colors you're using and where they're crossing over because you've got to think about color mixing and what colors will come from and putting those two colors together so let's smooch first of all a little bit of pink and we'll do this on one end so again it's not pouring off and this time I'm going to immediately go in with my texture spread 
spread that around a little bit more there okay then I'm going to go in with the blue and you can do this all in one smooch if you want to or you can do it separately and I'm going to just overlap this a little bit pressing down like so the green and the pink are mixing into each other quite nicely just a nice blend between the two and then what you can see happening is we're getting this purple in the middle now I didn't overlap them a massive amount I could have done it a lot more in fact I could have done that a lot neater rather than having the splodges around the edge but as an example you can see that purple starting to come through but what would happen if you were to do that with red and green two colors that don't in general make really nice colors between them now for this one I'm going to give you an example of how to smooch both colours at the same time. I'm actually going to switch from my small acetate to a much larger sheet just so I can fit both colours on and it's a really good idea actually if you do put your mat or your acetate or whatever you're putting your ink onto over your paper so you can kind of see the area that you've got to fill. So I'm going to put green down. This is a Game Distress Oxide, absolutely my favourites to work with. And then just beside that, I'm going to put some red. Quite Christmassy colours here. And I'm going to spritz both of them separately, just enough again, so they're not running into each other, but there is enough there. I think I might do a little bit more up here. There we go. Okay, so are we ready? I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to smooch both at the same time. So it's not dripping onto my paper just yet, as you can see. So I know I've got just about the right amount of water and I'm going to press these out. Now I'm purposely going to spread both of them quite away. And as you can see, if you know, you know your colors at all, red and green together make brown. So just here we're getting sort of an orangey brown color appearing. Lift that up. And you can see there the mix is what lifts up so do be careful if you don't love that mixed color that is what's going to lift up last and that's the one you're going to be left with if this happens and you really don't love it but you like the base colors you can dab 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 at that excess that lifted up and usually you can get rid of most of it so you want to really consider the colors that you are smooching together if you are going to do this the best way to make sure that you get the least amount of color mixing as possible is to actually let each single color layer dry before going on with the second color now a great way of really keeping your smooching to a small area is to use a much smaller applicator so you can cut a piece of packaging down smaller or use an acrylic stamping block. I think these are fantastic for adding a nice strip of colour. So let's just go in with, let's mix actually oxides and ink. So I'm going to go pink oxide on one end and distress ink on another. Ink pads are by far the easiest, but you can of course also use your saturated inks and you can water them down before applying them to your plastic or your acetate. So I'm going to spritz this with water. Again, I want to make sure that I'm not having so much on there that it drips off. And I'm just going to press this into my watercolor cardstock. Now, this is not going to extend very far at all beyond the shape and size of this block. You usually get a little bit at the edges, which you can take your kitchen towel and you can absorb up if you like. But as you can see, again, the last part of the block that lifts up is the part that you get the most color saturation. That's where the color kind of goes to before you lift off and it's sort of dropped there. What I tend to do in this instance sometimes is turn this over and then drip onto other areas as well just to give this a nice balance wipe my block and then just see am I happy now there is quite a lot here that actually looks like it will dry up okay I mean how beautiful is that we've got a darker area going on here where I lifted the block up I tilted it as I lifted it so the this edge here was left with the most ink but I really like that. I'm going to leave that. The whole idea with watercolour is you do get those darker tones and shades and those lighter ones as well. 
I also briefly mentioned using a stamping platform or stamp positioner to do your smooching with. This needs to be one that allows the uh, platform to touch the paper even if there's no actual stamp on there so you need that give. Not all stamping platforms will allow you to do this. So I'm going to take, I'll do two colours again. You do have less control this way I find. You can't manipulate where the ink is really going as much but it's a really nice fun technique um, if you like to have a little bit of unpredictability and you're happy to let the ink just go where it's going to go. So for this I usually use a little more water just because I'm not able to press it around where I want it so I need to let it allow it to flow on its own quite well so you can see I did have the drips because I've got more water that's fine it all wipes clean and I'm going to press that down now you can press this down a little bit in areas but for the most part you are really relying on that just doing its look it's moving without me even touching it there we go so what I'm going to do now is lift this up and give this a good press from the back. Make sure that's spread as far as it will. I can give this a clean up at the same time. Take any excess from here and then lift this off. Now, as I say, you are always going to get an unpredictable result, but look, that is absolutely beautiful. Now, if you do want added texture, use your kitchen towel, scrunch it up and lift off in places. Look at that, really, really pretty. So I'm going to show you how to use the concentrated inks for the same effect and then I'm going to show you that surprise technique at the end which I absolutely love doing. So this is a concentrated watercolour ink from Creative Craft Products. I'll make sure this is linked down below for you. These have so much pigment in them, they're amazing. You only need a couple of drops which means they last a long time. So I'm just going to do four little drops there. I didn't even squeeze the dropper, I just tapped it off of the end. And then I'm going to add my water. So I'm going to spray quite close into each droplet. Now there's a lot of ink on here and you can do it with of course less water and less ink if you want to. But I'm now going to flip this over very quickly because it's quite runny this way. Um, when you're using ink pads it's not quite as runny because the consistency of the ink you're putting on is of course much drier than the concentrated ink that we're using here. So I'm going to do a quick flip, sometimes there's splatters so make sure that things like your clothes, the area you're working on is covered if you're precious about it and I'm going to press, oh that's not actually too bad, I'm going to press this in and I'm going to make sure there's a lot of texture here as well. So you want some areas that are a little bit thicker than others ideally for this technique to work in the best way possible. Now I'm going to leave that for a minute or two so I can see the background is starting to soak in already. What I want is this for, to still be wet but for it not to be running anywhere. At the moment, we're still getting that movement just along here. It's watercolour paper. It will absorb really quite quickly. You can pop it aside for a minute and come back to it, but you kind of have a little bit of a small window with this technique. So while I'm allowing that to dry, I'm going to get my other products together, and that's going to be some gold embossing powder and my heat gun as well. And maybe you'll want something to collect your powder into. Okay, that's dry to a point where I'm happy with it. So I'm going to sprinkle gold embossing powder over this entire splat here. And I'm going to tap it off into, this is a card base, so a pre-made card base that I use for my card making. Um, I just love that I've already got the score line there. And look at that. Where the ink's still wet, we have got the embossing powder sticking. This is why you need to kind of practice have a play around with the timing and really you will get used to uh, the best time to add your powder if your powder sticks to everything I'm going to melt this while I'm talking if your powder sticks to everything just leave it just leave it for five minutes tap off from the reverse tap it off and see what comes off you may find then that the paper has absorbed enough of the liquid and the moisture to be able to tap that off and um, allow you to sort of have half of it off, half of it on like this, and then start thinking about setting your powder. Now the powder does take longer to set like this. You're best off trying to set the areas that were nearer dry, 
So I'm going to go to these smaller dots up here. Anything that's smaller will of course dry quicker. So I want to set those areas first. I say it takes a little bit longer because of the moisture underneath. But what you're also doing here is then drying this at the same time. You can just see that starting to turn at the bottom there. Love watching gold embossing. I think you can just about see that. Now a tip for you, if you've sprinkled your gold powder on and you've actually found that as you're heating it up, the paper's drying so quickly that it's uh, blowing away the embossing powder, just heat it from underneath instead. You can put your heat gun underneath, be wary of your fingers because the heat will travel a little bit and heat that until it's melted on top. This way you're not adding the uh, additional force of the air coming out of the heat gun and that will melt really nicely still in place. So there we've got a really lovely kind of marbled look to our watercolour splat. Now that's quite a bold one. I've had ones before where I've just had fine lines, small little dots that have caught on. It really depends how long you leave it before you add your powder, but that's a fun technique for you. Now, if you enjoy this video, hopefully you'll also enjoy this video here. And if you liked it, I'd love a thumbs up on the video too. And don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again very soon.